The Federal Reserve is tightening their screws on the real estate market and Wells Fargo's Q4 earnings and the details inside essentially prove it. What is going on, investors? Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. Time to talk about Wells Fargo Company in context a lot to do with kind of their mortgage business. And obviously the stock over the last year down about 21%. Year to date though, it's been rallying a little bit over the last six months. This thing's up 13%. They just reported their Q4 earnings on Friday. Revenues came in at $19.66 billion. That was a decline though of about 6% year over year. And it did miss expectations in large part because their mortgage business, which I'll show you here in a second, has absolutely fallen off the map. I mean, we're not talking about falling off the map. We're talking about completely falling apart. Now, for the upcoming quarters, Wall Street expecting right around $20 billion and some change in revenue. We're not getting a lot of growth over at this company. So in terms of its multiple, in terms of its maybe multiple expansion, might be a little difficult for Wells Fargo in order to do that. The other thing that's a little difficult for Wells Fargo at the these days are they're inching a little bit closer to getting out of hot water with all the regulators and all that type of thing as they agreed to a $3.7 billion settlement. This was just a one part or essentially three consent orders out of nine total settling for $3.7 billion. So there's more of these to come. This could have potentially be the most severe one. The other thing that maybe a lot of people don't understand about Wells Fargo is they actually have an asset cap that is set by the regulators not allowing them to go over a certain dollar amount in terms of the amount of assets. So they can't loan out an unlimited amount of money. They can't take on deposit even an unlimited amount of money because they have an asset cap based on penalties, fines, and regulations uh, that they were found guilty of uh, when they were opening up uh, essentially customers' accounts without asking them. Now, here's the big story over at Wells Fargo. Here's the big story going on, I believe, in 2023 is we are going to be talking a little bit about real estate today. Wells Fargo pairs back on their mortgage operations. It's kind of the second time that they've done this over the last uh, six months or so to focus on existing customers. The reason why they're focusing on existing customers is because new customers are are simply not there. When we take a look at Goldman Sachs data, we are seeing that lending standards on mortgages uh, still just remains very tight. So that would be one way to counteract higher interest rates, less demand for home loans is you could just loosen up your lending standards, start giving it to people with lower credit scores, start giving it to people with lower uh, income and income requirements and all the paperwork. We're not seeing that over at Wells Fargo. Some of that has to do with regulation. Some of that has to do with the lessons that they learned during 06, 07 and 08 and 09. We're not seeing credit score demand drop. We're seeing Jumbo mortgages, those are, I believe, $750,000 and more. The, that is declining. And look, with real estate prices continuing to increase, obviously more percentage could be of that jumbo variety. We're actually seeing a tightening of standards in order to get a mortgage. Now, according to Goldman Sachs Research, 2023, we are going to see double-digit declines in many of the major markets, including San Francisco, San Diego, Phoenix, Austin, Seattle, Tampa, there's only two markets. Yeah, two markets out of the major markets that Goldman Sachs analyzed that are actually going to have price increases in 2023. That would be Baltimore, Maryland, and Miami, Florida. Everything else, we are going to see declines. And a lot of these markets, they're expecting a decline into 2024 as well. So we're going to have two consecutive years of declines in many of the major markets, including massive double digit type drops, including Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, Annual mortgage cost as a percentage of your household income is sitting at 45%. This is not sustainable. So one of two things needs to happen if this market is going to say sustainable. So either people are going to have to get much, much larger wage increases. So if you have wage increases, that's obviously not going to let inflation go away. And if you are in that camp, if you believe that mortgage cost and the cost of mortgages, the cost of renting, the cost of buying a house is going to 
to stay where it's at or maybe even continue to go up, well, that means everybody across the United States is going to have to get a raise. And if they get a raise, that is going to keep inflation sticky and if not continuing to accelerate or go higher. That's obviously going to be terrible for the stock market as the Federal Reserve will absolutely have to continue to raise rates. The other thing and the probably the thing that has the path of least resistance is what Goldman Sachs is predicting is that we're going to have an asset price decline. We're going to have to have mortgage and home prices decline, rents decline. That, in fact, we probably already seen a peaking of this and we are going to see something that happened in the 80s and 90s. We're going to have to see a dramatic decrease in the price of homes and rent over the next, I would say, probably decade in order to make this sustainable. Now, as it relates to Wells Fargo, we are also seeing evidence that the Federal Reserve has tightened their screws so much that we are seeing average loans outstanding essentially peak. We're seeing commercial loans essentially go flat quarter over quarter. They are still up year over year, but I would argue that those interest rates are just now settling in and you're seeing quarter over quarter basically go flat on that average loan outstanding. Here's your average deposits over at Wells Fargo. Those have steadily gone down quarter quarter over quarter. This is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants. They want people to stop borrowing money and they want the average deposits to start to dry up as well. At the same time, Wells Fargo could still make pretty decent money as you see the net interest income on those average loans outstanding has ticked over the 3% mark probably for the first time in, I would guess, at least 10 years or so. Now, when we come over here to the financials, it paints a absolutely bleak story for the mortgage business at Wells Fargo, which is actually a very large business for this company at one time. Here's our mortgage banking. This is our non-interest income on mortgage banking. Notice that is just down 92%. And of course, I'm joking there. 92% decline in mortgage banking year over year. You were over $1 billion in income from that business unit a year ago. Now you have a rounding error of just $79 million. I know everybody's looking at the CPI report, which looks backwards. Here it is right here in plain and clear as day. You are down 76% quarter over quarter and 92% year over year in mortgage banking at Wells Fargo. That's about as obliterating as it possibly can get. Here's on the consumer side, total mortgage banking down 97%, almost down 100% year over year. Just uh, over the last year, over the last 12 months, Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates from essentially zero, a couple percentage points, and you are almost obliterated that entire business at Wells Fargo. 97% from 905 million all the way down to a paltry $23 million. And in fact, quarter over quarter, you were down 89% from 212 million down to $23 million. This obviously impacts Wells Fargo, but you, if you look at other lenders, like a rocket mortgage, you look at like Upstart, you look at even like a SoFi or any of the other banks that we've looked at during this earning season, this is catastrophic because the trickle down is all the advertising, all the servicing, all the other jobs that are layered into these types of things, all the contractors, all the home improvement, all of those things are getting decimated by exactly what we're seeing. And this is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants. I know some of you think that Jerome Powell is just going to continue to hike rates uh, the rest of the year. Uh, I am here to tell you that he absolutely cannot do that. He is going to absolutely obliterate many, many companies and many, many industries if he decides to do that, which he obviously will not do. Now, when we come over here to Wells Fargo, a couple things from the high level view at Wells Fargo. What we notice is their total revenues year over year actually down 6%. We talked about that at the lead. You have this $19.66 billion worth of revenue. That was basically 6% decline year over year. What I noticed about Wells Fargo that was a little bit different than Bank of America and JPM is their non-interest expense. That was actually up 23%. Some of it has to do maybe with some of these one-time or kind of shorter term costs that they're realizing with these litigation and regulatory and kind of customer remediation matters as they uh, like to refer 
refer to it. So we actually had our revenues decline, but our non-interest expense actually go up quite a bit. And then when you look at these provisions for credit losses, we talked about this when we talked about the other banks, is they're setting aside more and more money every quarter to essentially to prepare for customers to not pay their credit cards, not pay their mortgage, not pay their car loans, and those types of things. Last year, they actually took a credit of $787 million. In fact, last year was $452 million for two consecutive quarters. They actually said, well, I think the consumer is doing pretty good. We're actually going to put that money back into our pocket only for the next three quarters to steadily increase this. This is up 312% year over year, your provision for credit losses at nearly a billion dollars. That also is a sign that the Federal Reserve is tightening the screws and they're getting about toward the end of the tightening process because while the Federal Reserve may not care about you and I, they certainly care about Wells Fargo as it, it certainly is a member bank. When you flow down to Wells Fargo's net income, as you can imagine, you have declining revenues, increasing expenses on the non-interest side and increasing provisions for credit losses like rapidly, well, your net income is going to shrivel up at Wells Fargo. It's down 53% year over year. You made nearly $5.5 billion worth of net income last year. Now you're down again, 53% down to about $2.6 billion, even quarter over quarter you're down 20%. The Federal Reserve has a 2023 that looks like 2022 in terms of hiking. Well, you are going to go down probably even more rapidly in terms of net income and provisions for credit losses at Wells Fargo. They will obliterate the banking business if they continue to hike. That is why they are going to have to stop and likely reverse here probably sooner than most people realize. When you come over here and look at Wells Fargo from a price to tangible book, you see they tell you that price to tangible book, if you were to liquidate all the assets at Wells Fargo and maybe pay back all the litigation and those types of things. I don't know if that's included in tangible book or not. They're, you're worth about $35 per share at Wells Fargo. Stock's worth 44, so you're paying a small premium, about 1.27 times. What I'm seeing here over the last five years at Wells Fargo, you get up over 1.5 times tangible book, which were a stone thrown away with Wells Fargo. Well, that's about where the stock peaks out from a price tangible book. And when you come over here and look at from the technical perspective in terms of the stock price, essentially paints a same story. Stocks made a nice move off the lows that we had back in 2020, and it's made a series of higher lows, even more recently, just making this kind of beautiful upper trend. So this one has momentum. It's not like I would just run out and snap sell this company, but based on the mortgage business, based a little bit on the litigation, which I think they're starting to get behind them, but there's certainly the potential that the Federal Reserve, while they were late to raise interest rates, they'll be late to kind of pause and cut them and throw banks like this a lifeline. Well, that's certainly a risk, but I would probably have a trailing stop on this one. And you can log into your Schwab or E-Trade or whatever you have and uh, figure out how to put a trailing stop. I, I would be trying to move out of this stock as it continues to move higher. Technically, it looks like we want to move back to the top of the range up here at $59, $60 per share. I would take profits at that point. I've done that in the past with Wells Fargo. I've bought this and sold it towards the top of the range. This is a weekly chart and we're looking at well more than 10 years of data here. Certainly the stock could push higher than $60, but it hasn't done that in uh, over a decade or so. So you get anywhere near that, I would likely sell. And then from, again, from a price tangible book value, uh, you'd be at kind of a selling mode. Now, if we get a reversal on this one, Federal Reserve stays tighter for longer and you get a drop. Your first area to buy might be down here at 36. Wouldn't be wildly excited about that. Anything south of that, probably south of about $30. Uh, there's some really nice sideways consolidation. Certainly some people come in here and get this stock at those levels. And then from a price to tangible book value, you are getting some upside there. I, I just don't necessarily see a lot of upside in Wells Fargo at these prices unless you're paying this short-term momentum, which look, if you were to ask me right now, which way I think Wells Fargo is going to go, I think it's going to go higher. I think it's going north of 50, but that's just based on the technical pattern and just based on the momentum we've had with the stock over the shorter term. The fundamentals look absolutely crappy with this company. The mortgage business has fallen off the map. The auto business is likely going to fall off a map here very soon. If it hasn't already, we're going to have negative returns in real estate over the next year, probably two years, maybe even a little bit longer than that. You're going to have to have a great reset in the real estate market. It is certainly good 
for people that are looking to buy a house. Not going to be good for anybody looking to sell. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll be back again later this week with more earnings videos, including Netflix on Wednesday. Hopefully you guys have a great day out there. Good luck with your investments.